Hey everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, this is the first review I've done in a while, I've just been busy at work. This is a review of Freak Scene, the story of Dinosaur Jr. Directed by Philip Reichenheim and let's have a quick look at the trailer. Spinning the drumstick. Okay, I have it. All right, now it's your turn, Lou. There's a certain psychotic state that that is a bad. <laughs> we could have 20 marshals at each show. I could have three bass drums. We could seriously hurt people. Music and art is a gift. I know it sounds really cheesy, but it's true. It's a big part of my life. I started doing it when I was 17. I was already weird, because I, I, I decided to drop out of society already <laughs> in junior high. Welcome, Dinosaur Junior. Here we go. So this review is actually taking place not in my bedroom in London. I am actually currently in Poland. Uh, I've come to the Cameron Marsh Film Festival uh, for the third time uh, in my life. Uh, basically, I came in 2018 and 2019, and we are now in 2021 post-COVID, post-pandemic, but also it's still around, guys, so just be careful out there. Uh, and uh, yeah, today I am in a place called Torun, which is in the centre of Poland, and uh, I will be checking out the Cameron Marsh Film Festival today. And this is my first review for a documentary about one of my favourite bands and they are probably, they're literally one of my favourite bands because I kind of grew up with them. Uh, the band are Dinosaur Jr and uh, the lead singer is called Jay Massis, the bassist is called Lou Barlow and the drummer is called Murph. The reason I love this band is when I remember seeing basically, uh, it was probably 1994 maybe, uh, house concert in Bristol. So I grew up in Bristol in, in a school and I went to a school called um, Bristol Grammar School. Uh, there was a guy called Richard Morse who was wearing a Dinosaur Junior t-shirt at the Holman's House concert where I first kind of was getting into music. Uh, and I saw that Dinosaur Junior t-shirt and I thought, oh, that's kind of a cool grungy t-shirt and that's really cool, I better check out that band. And I remember going to the Virgin Megastore and buying um, Without a Sound, Feel the Pain, which was probably about 95 or 96. Um, and it had a kind of very kind of feral character on the front and kind of a weird cover and all the rest. And I thought, this is really curious, but I was hit by the single Feel the Pain um, by Dinosaur Jr. And I didn't realize at the time that this was a second version of the band. Uh, and the original lineup was something I hadn't really discovered yet. Uh, subsequent to that, I listened to an album called Where You Been, which is probably my favorite Dinosaur Jr. album, one that I go back to um, many times. And since then, my love for Dinosaur Jr. has kind of grown over the years. Um, I remember being in Warsaw, um, no, it wasn't. I, was, I remember being in Wrocław in Poland, uh, maybe in the early sort of 2010 to 2013 time, and listened to I Bet on Sky, which is a great album, and um, Watch the Corners is a really good single from that album. Uh, and also, there's you know other songs that have kind of like infiltrated my mind at certain points. And that the thing is with Dinosaur Jr., they're a band that you can come back to quite a lot in terms of you know you always find something new. And I think the greatest bands do that. You know, when you go back to a band like The Cure or the band like. Um, the Beatles, you, you, one day you're, not listen, you're listening to them heavily and then the next day you get bored of them and then maybe two months later you discover something new in it and then you go through that whole cycle again. And that's the kind of bands that I really love, the cult obsessive kind of fan club kind of band. Uh, not Mission Teenage Fan Club, they're another great band. Um, but really Dinosaur Jr. have just kind of, sort of soundtracked my, my youth really, which is, um, which is quite apt to finally see it kind of brought into a film and a documentary about the band. There's a lot I learned from this documentary that I didn't really know about the band and how they split up. I knew there was an acrimonious split, but essentially um, to, to discover like why and how it happened is quite interesting. One thing about this documentary, which is uh, slightly difficult, is you don't really get too much insight into the actual players, their backgrounds, why they got into music and this and the other. It was all, it, it's very much focused on the formation of the band and the sound and the scene and, and, and how Dinosaur Jr. were kind of pioneers of um, a particular sound that they had created, which then kind of led the path um, pathway for like Indian alternative rock in, in America in the eight, late 80s, early 90s. So you had this very much this punk aesthetic, which is coming through like, with bands like, you know, Minor Threat. They were part of a band, um, Jay Massis and Lee Barlow were part of a band called Deep Wound. And um, it's really good to see the formation of a music scene essentially through from the late 80s to the early 90s, which is kind of revealed in this band, it, which is kind of revealed in this documentary as well. The director of the film is a guy called Philip Reichenheim, otherwise known as Philip um, Virus. 
and uh, he is a German filmmaker um, who is actually related somewhat to Jay Masters. So I think his Jay Masters is married to his sister. But uh, essentially, uh, he's managed to capture the essence of the band in terms of the creativity and the ideology behind the band. The aesthetic of it, I think, is strong in this film. You know, if you like Dinosaur Junior artwork, you'll kind of get this visual, weird, DV, 90s filmmaking kind of like aesthetic, which you'd get normally from archive footage uh, from the 90s. But uh, it just really, he's really captured that really well. He's kind of got like a palette and color palette throughout the film, which really works with the tone of the film, you know, blending the archive footage with modern day interviews as such. So you go from DV to HD and this and that and the other. So that, that's kind of nice to see from a filmmaking perspective. The good thing I'll say about this documentary is that I do find it's really, really, it's relatively niche. I think it's, going to satisfy Dinosaur Junior fans, it's going to satisfy um, fans of grunge music and 90s music, in alternative rock, indie rock. If you like that kind of music, you're going to be happy. If you're not into this kind of music and you're discovering this band through this documentary, I'm not sure you will enjoy it as much. It is, It, it has an a uncommercial aesthetic to the making of the film, which narratively it's kind of like a montage of things and the kind of things can be seen as all over the place. There's little drop-ins of, you know, um, characters from, you know, the artwork and such and that doesn't necessarily work, but I get it from a fan perspective. Um, if you're not into Dinosaur Jr. and discovering the band, you'll kind of go, oh, this film's a bit messy and a bit all over the place. But the, thorough, the, the through line, the narrative thread throughout the history of the band and it culminating with a lot of archive footage which kind of takes you through each album, that's done structurally very well. Um, I do think it's a bit too niche for fans outside of Dinosaur Jr. Um, I think if you're a Nirvana fan, you'll see something here. There's also the element of Nirvana, which you know, Nirvana supported Dinosaur Jr. at the time. And uh, Dinosaur, Jay Masters mentioned that you know at the time, Dinosaur were a bit bigger than Nirvana, obviously, because Nirvana were coming up through the ranks, which is interesting how you know, that's flipped, essentially. Um, but the, the great archive footage you get from, say, Henry Rollins and um, Kim Gordon of Sonic Youth, um, uh, other bands, basically, I mentioned, basically, you know, Alice in Chains, Soundgarden, the grunge era, essentially, of the 90s. That's all kind of mentioned, so that, that's really important. Oh, The Cure I mentioned as well, quite clearly, because Jay Masses and Dinosaur Jr. did a cover of Just Like Heaven by The Cure. I think it's just a really good documentary, but I do think uh, if you're looking for a commercial documentary, a film that is put together commercially in a more narratively structure-led way with archive footage and is kind of more clear and concise, look at maybe uh, Back and Forth by The Foo Fighters. Uh, I think it's a film directed by James Moll, uh, and that was made in 2011. So um, that's got a nice, clean narrative, whereas this one's quite messy and dirty and all over the place. So that's something to be aware of as a viewer. But if you, as a filmmaker and as a viewer, you want the uh, inside job on Dinosaur Jr., this is the documentary to watch. Um, for me, I'm going to give it a five out of five, purely because I'm a Dinosaur Jr. fan. If you're not a fan, then, you know, go somewhere else and watch something else. But uh, essentially, this is a definitive archive uh, documentary about the band and tells us from the beginning to the end, um, really, oh, sorry, the end, the, the current state of where the band is at, sort of where they're at. And, and it's great to see the sort of, like, idea of, um, uh, you know, a continuing amazing rock band that we've had throughout our lives just continue to do what they love and that's kind of inspiring and, and kind of, you know, for people who are like, you know, I'm an old man, I play guitar, you know, it's still aspiring to be in bands, you know, it's kind of good to see, you know, that bands can survive and they can also realise the worth of music and creativity, which is what this is all about. It is actually out uh, on the 22nd of November uh, for digital download and should be available for you to stream or download um, on your usual platforms. I'll put a little link to a, another Q&A with Philip Reichenheim in the description. Um, and also, but thank you for watching my review on Dinosaur Jr., the story of Dinosaur Jr., Freak Scene. Freak Scene, the story of Dinosaur Jr. Um, and I will hope to be making more videos soon as and when. I'm not quite sure because work is very busy at the moment. I'm going to go discover the Cameron Marshall Film Festival in Torin in Poland and I will see you soon. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, leave some comments and uh, yeah, I'll see you soon.